On today's Locked On Texan podcast, Big Sarge Brian Barfield joins the Locked On Texan podcast to discuss OTAs, DeAndre Hopkins to Houston rumors, and then we'll close out with the YouTube comments. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Friday episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to our everydayers from the Himalayas. And if you are <laughs> new to the Locked On Texan Podcast, be sure to follow us wherever you listen to uh, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, along with subscribing on YouTube as well. We will dive into the YouTube comments. We will dive into DeAndre Hopkins swirling rumors, him returning back to Houston. Is that actually possible? <laughs> that we talked that we, about already. I do want to add that we did talk about, <laughs> but I am John Sosa Sports Guy Hickman. Of course, I'm joined by none other than Cody Davis, who is, you know, the Houston, Texas credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own. Y'all know us. So let's go ahead and bring in somebody that I honestly love having on our show. Got a comment last week. One of the greatest smiles in the city of Houston in sports media. So without further or ado, Big Sarge, welcome to the stream. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Look, back by popular demand, baby. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> Got to add me like another Beyonce show at, at uh, NRG. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, had, a, had, a, had, a, had a special request off Twitter. To get uh, that's what I'm show. saying, man. That's so I'm talking about. Hey, guess what? By having me back, Cody, I ain't got to put you in a, a hucklebuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, Sarge always say we invite him on the show every what three months or something like that. But yeah. somebody requested Big Sarge, and uh, Sarge, they requested you for one reason and one reason only. They want to know your thoughts about week two of OTA practice when we saw CJ Stroud take first team reps. Let's jump right into it. Sarge, what did you see from CJ Stroud? Hey, let me tell you something, Cody. If it wasn't against the rules, right? If it wasn't against media protocol and, and the, you know, Dallas Cowboy fan club, but if it wasn't against those two rules, I promise you, you would see me show up next week with a C.J. Stroud jersey. Well, maybe not a jersey, <laughs> but more or less like I would have like a white T-shirt with Texans on the front and a number seven on the back just to let you know how excited I am. And I know, listen, I know that it's only been two weeks of voluntary OTAs. Hmm. But listen, let me tell you all a quick story. When as soon as they broke into uh came out of their position drills and got ready to do the 707s, mm -hmm. and CJ Strauss stepped up with that first unit, <laughs> I turned to Mr. <laughs> Davis and said, A new era has begun. Mm -hmm. I am not going to lie. Watching that young man go six for eight during his the the two times that the two times that we got a chance to watch him in 707s, mm -hmm. listen. That wheel route that he threw to Damian Pierce mm. went after going through after going through two reads and then seeing Damian Pierce going up the sidelines, the way he dropped that ball in there, and I wish that Damian Pierce would have caught that, but I was so happy to see Damian Pierce frustrated with himself for not catching that ball because he knows that this season he's probably going to get a lot of catches out of the backfield. And so to watch that, and to also watch the way that he put that ball in the bread basket of one Mr. Nico Collins. And My favorite note, play. <laughs> and side note, Cody, you know that I'm an avid listener to Locked On Texans. Mm -hmm. Nico Collins is my guy. Okay? Oh, don't start this. Don't start this. Don't <laughs> start I, this. Listen, all I'm, listen, I know that that a lot of people can hear it in my voice, the excitement in my voice, and that's because of the last – for the last two years, I'm not going to say that I dreaded going to OTAs or to a mandatory mini, uh, mini camp or mandatory training camp. 
But to see the way that young man is picking up the offensive system, and I like the excitement from the wide receivers, the tight ends, and the running backs when he's in there. And I like the the new the intricacies and the nuances of the offense that Bobby Slowick is, you know, installing into the installing into the Houston Texans offense. Talking about Nico, talking about CJ Stroud. Uh, big stars earlier or late last week, early this week, depending on whenever you got the news. The NFL implemented a new kickoff rule. Uh, and when you look at the Houston Texans wide receiving group right now, you got guys that you want to ideally get them on the field in, in the return game to allow them to maximize their opportunities. Is it, Did you see anything out of Tank Dale? to where if he's on the field with the limited kickoff returns that the NFL already has, punt returns that they already have, that he can take snaps away from other players if he's not able to really utilize his strengths in the return game? So the one thing that I like about what uh, office coordinator Bobby Slowick said and what the wide receivers coach said was that Tank Dell is one of those guys that is soaking up the knowledge as he goes along. He's one of those guys that wants to be on the field at all times. So he's doing whatever it takes to be on the field <clears throat> as a rookie. And I know that we've talked a lot about his size. And, you know, even the other day when we were out there, I turned to Cody and I was like, man, this young man is going to have to put on some muscle. And, you know, I'm not saying it has to be very quickly, but they're going to have to put some type of weight on him really quick in order for him to, at least survive the first couple of weeks. I'm thinking if he doesn't take any, any shots, I do see them installing some type of plays to be able to just get the ball into his hands. And I'm talking about on the offensive side of the ball, not as far as special teams and return is concerned. Like what you had just said, I, I can see them being able to put him into that system, him being able to get the touches because we've seen what he's able to do. And I know, you know, I had someone, from the media the other day tell me, well, you know, of course he's going to look exciting in the AAC. <laughs> and I said, well, let me tell you this. Football players, no matter where they come from, if they're football players, they're football players. No matter who said this, who, who no, said this, I, I, I will not, I will not put him on blast. All I will say <laughs> is, Cody, the guy that I debate with on a continuous basis. Oh, I know so, you already told me. <laughs> so you know that's the same, but that's the same stigma that they put on. And the same stigma, the same label that they put on players out of the H out of HBCU. So I understand it. Mm. I'm used to having this conversation, but you know, no matter what, uh, no matter where, what what conference Tank Dale would have played his college football in, he was still going to be Tank Dale. So the way that I see them utilizing him is some way somehow getting the ball in his hands. Finally, maybe we can see what a true wide receiver screen is supposed to look like. <laughs> that's funny before we move on because we got to talk deandre hopkins on the defensive side of the ball uh matt burke spoke, spoke highly of Jalen petrie we've heard the hype around uh Derek stingley as he's looking bigger and faster and just an overall better player jacoby francis is getting a lot of opportunity out there steven nelson who i'm sure at some point we'll talk about next week he has been out there practicing have you seen anything from young buck Jacoby Francis to warrant a uh, camp battle or has he just been taking uh, advantage of his opportunity out on the field? And that's all. He's just been taking advantage of the, the opportunity to be able to be on the field, to be able to get the reps in, to be able to, you know, see the new install of the defense that they're going to give it. I don't see a battle, uh, you know, as far as his position is concerned, he, he's going to he's going to get his reps as far as you know playing time goes. But I don't see a battle going on. But what if you don't mind me deviating just a tad bit, Henry Tua Tua. Oh man, a rookie linebacker, oh, Alabama. My goodness. My goodness. With the All I want back in the thirty nine. Is he wearing thirty nine? Right. Yes, he is wearing number thirty nine. That is ugly. Here's a guy that I'm paying attention to, and I know that as training camp goes on, we'll see more and more because they're going to be ramping it up a little bit more, uh, getting ready to prepare for the first game against the Baltimore Ravens in their season opener. But to watch him on the field directing players on where to go. Now, this is a rookie. 
but directing players on where to go, where to be, him calling out plays, him calling out, him, him just being in the right spots at the right time. I'm saying to myself, are we sure that this guy is a rookie? Are we sure that this guy hasn't been here before? And that's a, you know, that that's a huge compliment to the system that he just came out of with, at uh, Alabama, you know, with Nick Saban. But this guy is like he's standing out to me. And I know, I, you know, I watch Derek Stingley. I watch Jalen Petrie. I'm watching Jimmy Ward. But I could not take my eyes off a of tour tour and what he was doing. And I say, I know it's early. I know that there's still a lot of camp to go. But I like everything that that young man is bringing so far. I've talked about the OTAs and what's actually happening on the field for the Houston Texans. But as you guys can see on my right side of the screen, DeAndre Hopkins to Houston. Those rumors are getting hotter. So stick around for more. Big Sarge on the Locked On Texan podcast. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA Finals because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back if your bonus bets in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel has great promotions every day. It's a safe and secure app and you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on all of the playoff action right now than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars that's fanduel.com slash locked on welcome back in ladies and gentlemen to this friday installment of locked on texans of course we got our guy big sarge on this friday installment we talked about it on monday and thursday night matter of fact more so friday morning the rumors started to pick up deandre hopkins to the Houston Texans. And Sarge, let's jump right into it. What are your thoughts about the possibility of D Hop returning to Houston? You already know how this wide receiver core has looked up until this point through the first two weeks of OTAs. I think the biggest thing right now everyone is debating is what the money is going to look like. I know we had the same conversation on Monday about, you know, whether or not it makes sense for the Houston Texans to go after D hop. And me and John both came to an agreement or close to an agreement that in terms of the money, it has to be something close to where, well, what I say, John, like at the end of the day, as long as Laramie Tunsil is still the highest paid player on this roster, um, that's fair. As of right now, everyone is looking at the deal that Odell Beckham got from the Baltimore Ravens, which is like one year, 15 million, somewhere around that ballpark. But Sar Sarge, what are your thoughts about the possibility of another reunion with a former franchise player? So, Cody, when you first started this segment, I thought you was talking about how do I feel about DeAndre Hopkins just being back in the city of Houston? Because, like, everybody loves Houston, no matter if you're <laughs> from here or not. You know, everybody loves the city of Houston. I love the city of Houston. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're not originally from here, but you've been here long enough. And, you know, you fell in love with the city as well. So, you know, everybody loves it. Great food, great people, great places to go, great weather, you know, no state tax. So it's like Houston is a lovely place to live. I mean, I would much rather live in the city of Houston than live in like, you know, San Antonio, Dallas, Austin. I, I know they're going to come for me, but I'm cool with that. But Houston is a lovely place to live. So when you first started off, I thought you was talking about <laughs> Houston, the city, not the Houston Texans. Cody, let me say this. I said this earlier, and I'm going to say this again. I use this analogy. You know, when I was single, you know, I thought about going back to some of my ex-girlfriends. You know, some of my ex-girlfriends told me, I don't want you back. Like, we're exes <laughs> for a reason. So I say that to say that the feelings have to be mutual, first of all. Mm -hmm. The feelings have to be mutual. The Houston Texans will have to want DeAndre Hopkins as much as DeAndre Hopkins wants to be here. Now, I feel like, and it's this this happens especially with older wide receivers, older running backs, and older quarterbacks. They always live in the past. They always live in their heyday. They always live 
in their prime. They never think that they, they've gotten older. Their mind says that they're still one way, but their body is saying, hey, it's almost time for us to shut it down. So I am a huge DeAndre Hopkins fan. Let me preface my statement by saying that. But if you're going to bring him back here, I think that what you will do is handicap your rookie quarterback hmm. because D-Hop, in his mind, is wide receiver one. There's no, you can never tell him he's not wide receiver one. So if he comes here, CJ is almost going to feel obligated to throw it to him because if he doesn't, then DeAndre is going to say something. And don't get me wrong. DeAndre Hopkins is by far one of the most on the field team players I've seen. He sacrificed his body. He sacrificed catches. He, he sacrificed himself catching from quarterbacks that he didn't even know he was going to be you know, catching uh, passes from on that day. So, yes, I've seen it from that aspect. That was in his prime. You're bringing him back now. What are you going to – so if you bring him back, what are you going to do with Robert Woods? Now you got two older wide receivers on, at the one and two position. So what do you do with Nico? And then what do you do with Noah Brown? What, so his coming back here would totally disrupt – a lot of things and even if even though they are in a rebuild for the next two years i personally would not want deandre hopkins to come back here based off of what the houston texans are trying to do the other thing that plays into this is that deandre you know deandre hopkins for a long time was his own agent right mm -hmm. now he signed with he, he has an agent he has a marketing pr firm this is all marketing. When he was on the I Am Athlete podcast, he said those three things that he's looking for, a stable organization, a good quarterback, and uh, a, a, de a, good, a decent to good quarterback, and a good defense. Yes, you can go in and you can insert the Houston Texans right there. Then again, you can also insert the Kansas City Chiefs. You can also insert the Buffalo Bills. You can also insert the New York Jets. Like there's other teams that you can insert in that spot. So this is all a marketing tool for a player who's unemployed at the time. So you have to make yourself hmm. seem valuable. You have to make yourself seem marketable to these other teams. And so you go out, social media is by far one of the best tools to use to market yourself. And that's what I see DeAndre Hopkins doing. That's why I told these Houston mm -hmm. Texans fans, hey, don't let these people sell you on hope. Like there's only one person that's ever been able to sell hope and he won the presidency for two terms. Like <laughs> that's it. You know, he knew how to sell hope. All right, now, Jesse Jackson. I was about to say, it didn't work too, too well for Jesse Jackson. <laughs> so I don't think that it's going to, I don't think that it's going to work. I don't think that it will work. I, and I honestly and truly don't believe that the Houston Texans want to go back to a situation like DeAndre Hopkins. I it's don't think that Nick Casario is, is in that mindset. He wants to move forward, not back. It's kind of funny. Everything you just described out of DeAndre Hopkins sounds like he signed to top ranked boxing. <laughs> um, but I will just as a quick challenge and rebuttal. The addition, if we play around with the idea of DeAndre Hopkins coming to Houston, the addition of DeAndre Hopkins does I, Hopkins does a lot of things. I think that you add DeAndre Hopkins now your wide receiver core presumably is top heavy. And so there is no rush for John Mechie. Honestly, like I, I see the tweets and comments all the time and people are so excited for John Mechie and so am I, but you know, he still hasn't played football and uh, coming off of what he came off of as a rookie, you know, why not take your time with him? There would be no rush for a tank deal. There would be no rush for an Xavier Hutchinson. And so now you would look at a wide receiving core that has veteran leadership presence, maybe not leadership, but presence. I would say leadership with Robert Woods. Let me not take that away from him. And then now you can sprinkle in your young guys and that would help them along their process of getting accustomed to the NFL, getting 
you know, not having to be thrown out there as much before they're actually ready. And then I still think if you add DeAndre Hopkins to this group, he is undoubtedly the best receiver. He takes this wide receiving group, this offense, from a level B to maybe a, a level B plus. I don't know what the offense is going to look like. I'm just for an example. So he's an addition in terms of talent-wise, but I also think from a roster standpoint, you give your young guys an opportunity to just kind of slow down. There's no rush. You come in, learn this playbook, and then we'll find ways to get you out on that field. A one-year deal with DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe you work something out to where this, you know, maybe get him on a two-year deal in, a, in the offseason. I don't know, but I wouldn't just say that DeAndre Hopkins would be to Houston would be a bad idea because I do look at it as now the bottom of the wide receiving group can take his time. Well, can I, Cody, before you go, can I say something real quick? Mm -hmm. So John, if you add him, so let's just say the three wide receivers you're going to run out there is Robert Woods, Robert Woods, DeAndre Hopkins, and Nico Collins. Where's your separator? You don't have like, and don't forget now, all that's three possession receivers that's clogging up space. You also added. Uh, I, I, Robert added Woods is a guy that I will. He would. He would be the middle the, in the in the middle guy. He doesn't have that speed like that anymore to separate. He's the same. Look, he's on the other side, just like Brandon Cooks was. Like mm -hmm. you can get a sep. You can get some separation like once every four plays, maybe once every you know. Three to four plays, but you're not going to get that on a consistent basis, and especially when you need it. So if you got Robert Woods, you got DeAndre Hopkins, you got Nico Collins, all possession receivers, and you've added a possession tight end in Dalton Schultz, mm. that's clogging up a lot of space. And so unless you plan on using Tank Dell to try to stretch the field, Xavier Hutchison, he has some speed, but he's not a separator. So now you have all of that clogged up. So how do you unclog that? I, I that that's what I'm saying. You got that's two. DeAndre Hopkins adds another possession wide receiver that's gonna get you, you know, get you the yards that you need to continue to move the chain. I get that part, but at some point the defense will adjust and say, well, if they're not going to take the top off, if they're not going to, you know, if, if they're not going to uh, uh, blow the top off, let's go ahead and bring the safeties down a little bit on top of the fact of, you know, we got to watch Damian Pierce. So you're making it easier for us to be able to crowd the box a little bit more because we don't have to worry about anybody getting behind us. That was Big Sarge. His thoughts on DeAndre Hopkins potentially returning back to Houston. And, of course, in the first segment, we kicked it off with OTAs. As always, Big Sarge, where can everybody find your podcast, your articles, and everything that you do on social media? You can follow me at Big Sarge Sports with a Z at the end on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, I am the host of the Sports Talk with Big Sarge podcast. You can find that. That's available wherever you get your podcast from. <laughs> and uh, you can find uh, my articles on uh, Texans Wire USA Today. And please, I, I – I don't – this is a shameless plug. I wrote an article the other day about the Houston Texans wearing the orange Uvalde shirts for uh, Gun Violence Awareness Day, which is mm -hmm. Friday. Yes, Gun Violence Awareness Day uh, and Wear Orange Day. So they had on the orange Uvalde shirts for, you know, to bring awareness to gun violence. I would just like people to go and read that article and – Listen, I mean, I'm sorry, and read the quotes from Houston Texans head coach D'Amico Ryan's and how gun violence has affected him and his family and what he thinks about on a day to day basis when it comes to dropping off his kids at school. So, you know, you don't have to read anything else, but just please go and, and take a look at that article. That's one that was near and dear to my heart. And it was very emotional and sentimental for me to write because I do remember the Uvalde high school football team coming before mm -hmm. the season opener but against the Indianapolis Colts on last year. And, man, you know, I had to get to a corner by myself because I, I could just imagine, you know, losing loved ones like that, and it was still so fresh. Welcome back in, Locked On Texan listeners and viewers. That was Big Sarge, Brian Bearfield of the Texan Wire and the Big Sarge podcast uh, stopping by. 
Now we are heading over to the YouTube comments before we get out of here and enjoy our weekend. One comment was uh, from a couple of days ago, the Texans takeaways from week two of Houston Texans OTAs. My man, and once again, if you see this podcast and get to this point, make sure you correct me because I know I'm going to be wrong. Ten ton men. I'm sorry if I (laughs) butchered that name. But he commented on that podcast and said, this Texan coaches, I think he mean these Texan coaches are not the previous year's coaches. So it's hard to predict what new coaches would do with rookies. I, I, I 30% agree with you, honestly. But when you have the research and the data, and by no means, my man, am I you know, trying to be rude or anything? But what I am saying is you can go based off past experience, like when you look at what Bobby Slork was able to do in conjunction with, you know, uh, uh, Kyle Shanahan, when, when you look at what D'Amico Ryans was able to do with that defense for two years after Robert Sala left, and now looking at him having an opportunity to look at the uh, Toa Toas and, 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 you know, the rookies on the defensive side of the ball, Will Anderson, you can kind of get a gist of what this group of coaches will be able to do. Shane Day with, uh, with, with, with my boy Justin Herbert out of L.A., so – I 30% agree with you because they're coming into new positions all together. Bobby Slook's first time as an OC. D'Amico Ryan's first time as an offensive coordinator. Some of these coaches, when we look at Matt Burke, he's a defensive coordinator for the first time in a, in a few seasons. I want to say since Miami. Uh, I can understand that, but there is still past research that we can go based off of. Uh, my man, J Rock5335. Finally, a new layout. <laughs> Jay Rock, I'm sorry, man. If the layout was kind of getting outdated and old <laughs> for you, man, uh, the network they went ahead and hooked us up, man. I, we I, have no control over the layout and graphics. We we don't have none of that. It's all about the network. So what? It was this our second year on YouTube. So maybe in the next two years we'll have a different layout. But we are happy that you liked it. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got, man. You guys are funny. I, I really do enjoy these comments because sometimes I don't know where y'all coming from with some of them. But let's take a look at the in what ways can the Houston Texans secondary improve under D'Amico Ryan's. Uh, my man, I'm putting I'm putting domain. <laughs> okay. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> uh Yep. He said, he commented, I just don't think any team can afford to go into a season without three valuable quarterbacks any longer. We are lucky to have two guys behind CJ who have started multiple NFL games. Hey, man. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Listen, the only way I'm moving on from Davis Mills is if a team calls and the pick is valuable, right? Like, you know, fifth round or fourth rounder, for a former third-round quarterback, I think that's a win. And so if Tampa and Vegas comes calling and that pick looks good, I wouldn't mind moving on from it. But I 100% agree. The NFL actually just made a new rule to where you can add a quarterback or add a player mm-hmm. a day before the game or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that is in direct response to the 49ers playoff game against the Eagles where Christian McCaffrey was out there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> McCaffrey was out there with the quarterback. Uh, but I, I believe you need three quarterbacks on this roster, on any NFL roster. So, yeah, I don't I don't move on from Davis Mills and Cody. You know, I caught flack saying that moving on from Davis Mills prematurely while he's still on a rookie contract doesn't make sense. But if a fourth or a fifth rounder, like the, 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 the latter would be that fourth rounder. If that's mm. included, I'm sorry, you got to go. Well, you already know how I feel about this situation. Um, You know, first and foremost, I would like if Davis Mills stays because, of course, I also see value in having a backup quarterback that you can rely upon um, as of right now, especially after everything that we saw. Of course, it's still early, but after what we saw during the second week of OTA practice, um, it's always good to have that veteran presence as your backup. And of course, that could be somebody that CJ Stroud, an additional person that CJ Stroud can go go to, lean upon, and ask for help because you know, I think Davis Mills can actually help CJ Stroud where 
his transition to the NFL, especially his transition to an NFL starter, would not be as challenging as what Davis Mills had to go through. Um, but, you know, I will say this, though, John, I agree with you. You know, depending on the pick, a fourth rounder is the latter, a fifth rounder, probably a little bit more realistic when you take a look at the situation that's going on in Las Vegas and the terrible videos that are coming out of Tampa Bay. Um, I would say without a shadow of a doubt, Houston Texans, go ahead on and make that make that call. But I just would like to see Davis Mills move on just for him personally because, look, I'm, like, I, like I mentioned the other day, I'm still rooting for him. I still believe he has an opportunity to be at least a, a, a quality starter in this league. And, you know, if CJ Stroud keep progressing the way he's progressing, I don't think he's going to see the field too much longer. <laughs> you know, before we close out, this is throughout all of the show's comments. You'd be surprised how many uh, Texas fans do not want DeAndre Hopkins back. Thank you guys for checking out this Friday episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans. Also, take those same two thumbs, scroll over to YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, like, comment, and share as well. I'm John from Sports Guy Hickman. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, it's Cody, C-O-T-Y, D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.